Your life comes to a full stop, period. When you're involved in that much trauma, everything stops. And that's the point where you really have to make a decision psychologically and mentally how you're going to face that challenge. That was the hardest part. The Achievables. It's 5 a.m. Let's get going off the radium. Guys should be waiting for us, so let's hit the road. The West Kelowna professional firefighters are pioneering a trip for their brothers who were badly injured and suffer from PTSD. I was a very able, large firefighter. All of a sudden, overnight, that's all done. Over. Aaron Clements was selected from the West Vancouver Fire Department. One of the challenges I faced in the last few weeks since I was invited on the trip was uh, I had to really resist the urge to make some excuses to not go. Uh, I found myself sort of laying awake at night and wondering about the trip and not being certain about what to expect. And I had some pretty good ideas of how I was going to, uh, to get out of it. So here we are. I'm on the road um, facing, facing that particular challenge, and I'm, I'm looking forward to see, seeing what will come out of it. There is grief that happens when, when there's a loss, and I didn't have that. Jackie Tom was born visually impaired and has applied to volunteer as the camp cook. It's a chance just to get out in nature, which I don't get to do too often because both my husband and I are, are both uh, legally blind, partially sighted. Troy Becker will be leading the trip. So I'm excited to meet Aaron Clements. Uh, Aaron has a left arm amputation, and we figure that he's probably has some PTSD. I was injured uh, almost eight years ago now, and uh, it was on the river. I was badly injured on the river, so the thought of going to the uh, that environment again kind of gives me a little bit of um, a little bit of nerves for sure. Got apprehension. And um, that apprehension has kind of built in the last few weeks uh, to, I could actually say, somewhat uh, borderline anxiety. You know what yeah. sucks about right. ponytails? Headrests. Yeah. <laughs> Less than four years into his injury, Aaron Gallowitz will be forced beyond physical and psychological barriers in an attempt to rebuild his life. Uh, I definitely want to, you know, get out and things that I was afraid of doing before. Aaron Gallowitz was a Surrey firefighter before he had his accident, which left him as a quadriplegic. Simply completing a multi-day trip this early into his injury will be an accomplishment. There's no point in being afraid for your life, right? You just get out there and live as, as much as you can. The river rafting and the adventure we're going to have is going to throw some things at us that'll be a challenge. And we'll see. We'll see how we all, uh, all fare together. Aaron, Troy, it's good to meet you, buddy. How are you? Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Have you met, guys? Jason? sounds unusual but you can go through life with a disability like this and you know basically never see anybody like that most people are able all right good to see you brother good to see you man good to see you excited very excited cool i hope that i can push myself and do things that i hadn't otherwise thought of before the trip opportunity came up so i'm pretty excited don't know what tomorrow will hold right so i just don't want to take anything for granted Jason, Jason. How are you? Aaron? Yeah, nice to meet you, Aaron. <laughs> All right, I got it so far. Hi there. Hey. I'm Aaron. Aaron, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. And that's Jackie. Trying to come to terms with this new reality, you know, it's uh, more emotional than it is physical. You learn to be uh, simultaneously unique and a bit of an outsider. You go through Walmart, people look at you. It's not easy. It's really, really tough and just to be able to have that strength is amazing what our human spirits can go through. I really don't know any other people with disabilities. I'm hoping that over the course of this week we can get to know each other a little bit and you know, work through that a little bit with each other. 
For Aaron Gao, it's uh, safety of Paramount and importance to us. And also making sure when he's in the boat that he can contribute uh, as much as possible and as much as he's comfortable. I was a little apprehensive about going in the water again. Um, swimming was uh, difficult and that's the frustrating thing. You know, I was good at it before and not being able to now. Um, first time kayaking, I nearly drowned again. Um, so that was uh, another stark realization that I need to get helped out with. With limited mobility, Aaron Gallowitz must rely on those around him on the river. A uh, feeder seat is basically an adaptive seat that's used to put people in it so that you can change your position uh, to either help feed them or whatever. But in our case, we're not actually using it for that, out, for that at all. We're actually gonna use it solely for positioning in the raft and for comfort in the raft. Seeing it firsthand definitely helps alleviate some of the uh, apprehension that I had about it. Um, I don't have the, the greatest um, upper body control. Uh, I don't really have any torso control, so I didn't know if I was gonna be just laying on the bottom of a raft. So we're not here to freaking push them down the river. Hey man, you're here to... I don't know, I, don't, I definitely don't want to be the pharaoh. I, That's I, right. I, I, want to be, uh, I want to be part of the action. Being on the river actually makes me a little bit nervous. This is Aaron Clement's first time on the river since his accident. And because of his arm amputation, we need to figure out a way that he can actually release the paddle and feel safe. Jen, the river guide, must determine if the healer's coil-shaped prosthetic adaption Aaron Clements found is a suitable paddle grip for the level of rapids. Hey, right, Aaron, ready to go, buddy? I think I am. All right, we're all set up. Yep. You're good to go, Jen? Yeah, I, I think, think we're, we're set. Got everything situated, everybody's comfortable. It looks good. Sweet, let's make this happen, dude. All right, looking forward to it. Found it. Awesome. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think with uh, the, the professional raft guides here and the safety protocols, um, I'll be able to manage my anxiety, anxiety. A little bit nervous, definitely. My favorite thing, the sun sparkling off the, the water and it looks, uh, I'd say sea foam, like a sea foam green. I'm really good with colors, so it's, I'm very happy about that. Jackie is actually an experienced paddler who's been on a few rafting trips over the years. So she's actually gonna be in the canoe and leading the trip. I've grown up in Creston, so I've been on the, the rivers a lot. And I love speed. I love to find gravity. And this, that was just one example where I could just go full out and not worry about hitting poles or going falling down stairs or anything like that. It was just, it's cool. So when a rapid comes up, I go by my hearing and what, if there's another boat ahead of me, I hear them go woohoo. The Achievables. family trip to Revelstoke with my wife Anne and our two boys Rory and Lucas. Here we are in Revelstoke BC. It is 26 degrees, a warm day. It's hot! I'm hot! The boys were really young at the time. Can't believe it. Aaron finally caught a fish. Can you keep them, Papa? Ooh. Is it a nice size? Nope. 21 inches. Uh, Papa, you should make a couple of this one. <laughs> That's a good idea, I will. <laughs> and then I just quit. Just kind of gave up and didn't do it. After an experience like, like I had, uh, being risk averse is a, uh, a serious challenge. Aaron, yeah, that rope's there if you need it, if we're going into some big waves sideways, potentially. If we're not paddling, I'll hang on. The team must paddle 30 kilometers to reach their campsite for the night. 
around the corner. Um, the river splits into two channels, and we're gonna try to. We're gonna have to paddle hard to the right channel, and that's why I'm saying we're gonna have to turn the boat. So just be prepared for maybe a couple of side waves. You have to be pretty fluid with your body, just like with the water. Uh, otherwise, they get off balance. We're gonna try to hit as many waves as we can and then still get to the inside. Okay, Kim, you can hop in and we're gonna get going, team. Everybody ready? You ready? Sweet! All right. My accident occurred in August of 2011. One of my work colleagues was getting married on the weekend. Uh, we had uh, chartered a jet boat from a local uh, local provider who had a boat. Uh, none of us were driving. Nobody really had experience. I was sitting behind the driver and, and just filming us heading down the river. The jet boat slipped and slided sideways into a uh, a log jam, essentially. And with my arm up on the, the gunnel side of the boat, a long kind of a pike pole or spear came into the boat, and it uh, caught me under the arm. They call it a degloving injury. Everything under the arm was just immediately ripped out. The arm was degloved. Left side of my rib cage, five ribs were crushed. I had two massive life-threatening injuries in the split second. As I was ejected, my body went through two large firefighters behind me and rendered them unconscious. A couple of big men were able to lift me out of the river and put me in the bottom of the boat, take off a flight jacket and, uh, and T-shirt and realize that I had an arterial bleed that was Im imminently life-threatening. So somebody took off a T-shirt, rolled it up and shoved it in the hole as hard as they could. And that was my first aid. It was immediately life-threatening. Life there was there was really no reason why I should have survived that day. Uh, they transfused 30 units of blood into me that night. On the water, the team is approaching their first surge of rapids, a set of high rollers exposing the raft to potential swamping. Oh, we're starting to rock and roll here a bit. You can feel the canyon starting to get a little bit narrower. The first couple of moments, you feel a little apprehensive. Water's speeding up a wee bit. Yep. Ooh, I better pay attention. Oh, yeah, get wet. So those canoes are going to the inside corner because for the smaller boats, it's kind of less wavy over there. There's bigger waves on the outside corner. You guys game to take the meteor line? Yeah. Yeah? What do you think? I don't know why those other guys wouldn't have done it. Yeah. <laughs> the kayak. <laughs> when cats start chirping, we <laughs> <laughs> The raft is like, la, 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 very easy. And <laughs> but the, the canoe, you have to really push it. And it feels like you're, you're slamming your paddle into cement, especially with the when there's more rapids. <laughs> hey, why'd you guys go on the left side? That was the easy side. Yeah, come on. You, you kind of stall out a little bit and you really don't know if you're helping or making it worse or what you're doing with your paddle. I like it, I like it. <laughs> and forward! Keep going, guys! Noise really starts to, to build up as you come, come closer so you can kind of you can really feel the river's power through the, the sound and the, the motion of the, of the raft. One big wave here at the bottom of this will hit. So get ready. All forwards. And stop.
Um, I'm, I'm, st I'm starting to feel pretty good. I'm proud of myself, taking some risks and being okay with that. Whether you're challenged with some uh, physical disability or not. The Achievables. The Achievables. I was a firefighter and transitioned from fire suppression into fire prevention. So fortunately, I work in the fire hall where all of my old colleagues are, are still there. Still get to interact with, with the crews every single day, which is really special for me. Being discharged from the hospital is just the first step. Um, I had an arm that was totally dead. Couldn't move it at all. After two years, Aaron was forced to decide between keeping an unresponsive arm or undergoing an amputation. From what I recall, the nerves grow about a millimeter a day. And when you have an arm as long as mine, it's, there's a point where they don't grow anymore. But the hand never did wake up. I never did get like even a twitch in my fingers. What will I be left with? Will the bones be sharp or will they be? They'll be rounded. So the, 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 the bones are cut short to the skin. And then, so there's muscle mass here, particularly that the, what's called the flexor digitorum superficialis, which is on the front side here. Once the bones are cut short to where the skin edges are gonna be, the muscle is used as a flap to come up over top of the, of the bone edges to give it some sort of soft tissue cushioning on the end of it. And so it ends up being sort of a fish mouth kind of incision. It was a working process to make yourself understand what would be best choice for you. The incision will look like it's just right around the front of it, but the skin incision we make is sort of more like a fish mouth in terms of the shape. So you can fold it? Fold it together. Bring it back together. Will it be staples or will it be uh, stitches? Stitches. Stitches, eh? Yeah. Stitches are just more delicate for the for the skin in terms of uh, being here. It's more, a little more precise. Unbelievably, when I woke up from the anesthetic, I was in my bed, I, I kind of, yeah, now I can move forward. Hi, Papa. Hey, Lucas, how are you doing? That's good. It's all it's all done now. What does it look like? It, it doesn't look like much of anything. It's it's all wrapped up. Does it feel good? You know what does feel good? It's so light. It's kind of like it's light as a feather. My whole sort of arm now. When are you coming home? Well, maybe tomorrow, but maybe the day after. We'll see how I feel. There's really no way I could have done any of this without my family. That was a critical part. My wife, my children, um, my parents, um, and all my friends, they really helped me. Um, you can't do that kind of thing alone, period. Back on the rapids, the two former firefighters rein in their trepidation as they head into the white surge. There's some... Um, um a lot more rapid set. There's definitely some reservations. Hopefully nothing, nothing goes wrong. Should Gellowitz be bucked out of his seat, the two firefighters beside him know their role. They must not hesitate to enter the water with him, supporting him through the turbulence to safety. In a moment, they will be flushed into the middle of the turmoil. rips the paddle out of the helix coil shaped prosthetic adaption. Nice work! All right. Okay, take a quick rest and all forward. Oh, that is so cool. This is definitely a, a different feeling. It's not, not what I've been accustomed to, you know? I've definitely been more of a city boy. That was a good one. <laughs> well, yeah. You got to do that one. I'm feeling the rule. Aaron Gallowitz, pretty fresh 
still from his injury. And it's gonna take, uh, it's gonna take Aaron a little bit of time. Safely off the water, minutes before the storm, the exhausted team gets to making dinner. We're having chicken, sausage, and uh, shrimp jambalaya. The camping is definitely, uh, I used to be an avid camper, so trying out that again for the first time, I'm sure there's gonna be, it's, there's obstacles and challenges. There's no boss, it's a, it's a democratic kitchen here, but I'm gonna instruct uh, what we need to do here. I do know the basic game plan. I have to really focus when I chop things. <laughs> Sorry. That's an interesting point. One slip and that's it. Come on. <laughs> hey, Gallowitz, what would you like me to do here tonight? I'm ready, willing, and able to cut. All right. Um, so if you can continue on with the pepper here, uh, start with the red pepper. The pepper. It's the same thing, just cube it up. Aaron Gallowitz is faced with another level of challenge because he was an able-bodied man before. He was a firefighter. I can remember the phone call even of just getting on and how happy I was. You know, it was never considered work, right? It was always a pleasure to go in and you know absolutely loved it every day, you know, up until the up until the final day I was there. Beautifully done. An advantage, right? If I recall correctly, this is called a farmer's hook. Yeah, knife sharpener in that thing. I, I do need a knife sharpener. How do you get it open and close? I pull on the cable and it's just an elastic band that uh, four elastic bands that kind of give me a little bit of power. It's squeezing power, but the cable travels up and around into this harness. I'm gonna roll my shoulders. There's a strap that runs down through a guide. Nice. Yeah, it's just like pulling the cable on a bicycle brake, really. It's impressive. But to be kind of harnessed up like a, like a workhorse and using your body to operate your appendage takes a little bit of time to get used to because it's it's pretty tiring. You know what I mean? Yep. I consider myself extremely fortunate. There's no two ways about it. Um, anything could have gone wrong with that injury of mine, and I got off mostly with um, like mechanical injury. Um, Aaron's faced with another level of challenge. In 2015, family holidays became a living nightmare for Aaron Gallowitz. Myself and my friend just went swimming in the lake. I dove in off the shore to some, what I thought was deep water, and there was an underwater stump about 10 feet out. There were stings I remember from the, immediately after the accident, you know, from this, the sounds, the, you know, the smells, and just being on the dock and some of the signs that I had read about for people with, with spine injuries. It was a fear I had then. Gallowitz would soon learn he had shattered his C6 vertebrae, cutting his spinal cord in the process. He would be a C5 complete quadriplegic. I had everything before, but still felt like I needed more, whereas now, you know, I have physically less, but I, I know what's important. You have to adapt. Every one of us knows about that. Yes. Yeah. Adapting. Uh, everybody is different, but they have the way that they have to adapt and the things that they have to overcome. I still struggle mentally. I still have my days. Like cutting the sausage here. Anything I cut that's dark, I usually use a, a white cutting board. White background? Yeah. So the contrast, so I can see it. How's that for? I, did anybody tell you to do that, or did you just determine that on your own? Determine that on my own. <laughs> wow. It's just something that you do that works, right? You can get some help and get some training, but 99% of the things that we do to make it make it a day a little easier are things that we've figured out on our own. Mm -hmm. tying, tying shoes is one example. <laughs> I have two uh, uh, shoe tires built in at home. Oh, okay. Lori and Lucas, my boys. They tie my shoes for me. Awesome. <laughs> my mom tried to show me how to tie shoes when I was in kindergarten, and um, she showed me the sighted way, I guess you could call it. <laughs> I never caught on. And uh, so I just kept trying myself, and I did it my own way. It's not the same way that anybody else does, but um, that's how I learned how to tie my shoes. Find what works for you. Yep. I've 
naturally adapted and modified things uh, to where it works for me, just not knowing that I'm doing it, right? Where they have to consciously make those changes. And just to be able to have that strength and that, that uh, guttural fortitude is just it's amazing what our human spirits can go through and, and get through to the end. When I was in GF Strong, you know, they show you um, what works for other people, and they show you YouTube clips of how other, you know, people with your similar injury can do things, but um, everybody's, every injury, every disability is different, right? So people just find a way that, like you said, works for them. And it just gets better with repetition and doing it time after time. How did you um, get over that mental, that challenge where, you know, Everything's different, and you have to uh, make that, you know what I mean? There's, yeah. that, there's that switch you make where you go from, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this really sucks, this sucks, this is difficult, to, you, ca you kind of cr cross a threshold at some point. I'm still getting there. Yeah, for sure. Aaron has a lot of strength, and I hope that he comes to realize that, that uh, over time he can harness that strength, and Aaron can, Aaron can get his gur back. Today was a great day on the river. Um, hopefully everybody's going to be able to get a good night's sleep, because tomorrow's a big day on the river again. Plus, we're also going to possibly do a hike or something that nobody knows about. I looked out this morning from the tent and just, you know, saw everybody chipping in to make breakfast, take everything down. Definitely the hardest part is just watching everybody, you know, contribute and, and I can put in where I can, but all these people came together, made it happen. It's difficult for an able-bodied person, right? We came together yesterday, we didn't know each other. And then just over the course of the day, we're all doing something that's common and we're sharing an experience and um, where else can you do that but in the wilderness? It makes you feel more empowered to continue on and take on these challenges instead of uh, playing on that fear and, and just keeping to the, the norm and to the, your comfort zone. Aaron Gallowitz is determined to push the limits by testing his stability in the canoe. I've seen the guys have a lot of fun on the rapids here, and I'm just nervous that I'm only paddling on the one side, so we might be doing donuts. I'm feeling pretty sturdy in this. The chair is pushed right up against it, so it's got me snug in here. Definitely a lot thinner boat than the yellow raft that we were in before, so it should be good to change it up. The paddlers have 20 kilometers of rapids to cover today, leading them past an isolated waterfall. And some of the stuff that we wouldn't have seen, you know, that you can't see from the road, going through those canyons, seeing the different hurricanes. And... Oh, it's a waterfall coming up. Oh, we got a paddle forward. All together. Strike. First time going through the Rockies, and the end of the trip ended with me and Rebel Stoke and my accident. This is uh, pretty surreal right now, actually. It just makes me forget about, you know, forget about the injury. Gallows was a former firefighter. You, you need to really work hard to become a firefighter, and uh, you, gotta, you have to want it. So I know that Aaron has that gur inside him somewhere. You can't hold back from the opportunity. You can talk about it, but you never know what tomorrow brings. So I'm definitely proud, yeah. The Achievables. The Achievables.
achievables. Regaining his confidence on the water, Aaron Clements will test himself paddling an inflatable canoe. I was um, honestly surprisingly overwhelmed when we ferried across the river there. I felt uh, a real big surge of emotion there. It's uh, really nice to be out again, doing something with a crew. I just looked across at my paddle mate there and we were both pulling at the same time and it just had a huge lump in my throat. <laughs> and just in a sense of adventure, I really haven't done that. I kind of shut myself out from it. I could see a canoe trip in my future with the, with the family. If you're too fearful and you don't take any risks, it can really slow you down in life and make you kind of hesitant just to do some of the everyday things even. After a long day on the water, the paddlers reach the base of the hike. It took me a long time to ask for help. Um, you know, I always did things for myself and always, you know, took it upon myself to um, see things through, right? I mean, nobody can do as good a job as I could. He's going to be sitting in the trail rider, and he's going to be depending on uh, a couple of firefighters, both on the front and back, to maneuver through the difficult terrain. This is going to be quite a trusting experience for Aaron, and he hasn't actually been in the trail rider before. This is going to be uh, something to definitely challenge me and get me out of my comfort zone. Um, we're going to have our challenges with the terrain, but that's what it's all about. I think this is probably the most vulnerable I've ever felt since injury. You, you know what, it, it really is probably the most trust you'll have in people. Yeah, trust, is, I, sorry, I think maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Definitely the most trust I've invested in somebody else. It's nice to, what I see, and then get that description of what I see, yeah. what everybody else is seeing, because then that fills in those gaps where my imagination might take over and see things that are totally wrong. <laughs> Jackie has a, uh, a solid, steady outlook on life that I, I really admire. Um, she taught me how to guide somebody with visual impairment. I spent the first day and a half grabbing her wrist, holding her elbow. She never once um, corrected me. It was up to me to be observant and pay attention to how she wanted that to go. And then when I finally got it, I just gave Jackie my elbow. That's all there was to it. Going on this glorious hike and the waterfalls and seeing the different colors and the, the white, the shale and everything, it's just mind boggling. It uh, brings tears to your eyes, just how beautiful it is here. Absolutely incredible. The whole river is going right through a tiny little keyhole and boiling down, creating a lot of white water. You can see where the water's worn it away over yeah, so many dark. years. That's where the water's kind of worn it away, I guess. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, undercut and yeah. rocks would fall off. And yeah. I couldn't imagine somebody running that with a canoe or a kayak. I feel pretty insignificant right now. <laughs> I feel pretty. Mighty tiny. I definitely wouldn't challenge myself to get this close if I would have been able-bodied, so the fact that I'm trusting these guys and put myself right here looking over, there's nothing I can't do now. There's the safety fence, there's the danger zone, and then there's us, you know, like on the other side, so definitely pushing the limits of the comfort and uh, definitely a good thing. It's good to feel that again, for sure. It's the first time I've probably felt that since uh, as long as I can remember. For a final memory, Troy leads the paddlers right onto the top of the waterfall. Troy, Preston, there. Uh, how's your footing? I can go another five feet. Okay. Totally fine. <laughs> <awesome. laughs> Aaron's like, yeah, we're good. Okay, breathe. You know, I've been reluctant to give up the independence, independence if you will, if I can make quotation marks with my hands, to come in a trail ride like this and let other people do the work for me, but you know, I wouldn't have been able to do this without sitting in this device here. I wouldn't have been able to sit on top of that waterfall, so. That's perfect. 
there's definitely open up um, a world of opportunity by allowing allowing other people to help you. I have two young sons, uh, 13 and 14, and um, be proud to, to have them see what we've done here and accomplish as a group. Everybody chipping in together and working as a team and uh, building such a wonderful experience for all of us, not just for one or two of us. There's lots of like swirling water and bubbles that reach right to the edge and then it just crests over. You can actually, if you look closely, you can see the rock flow that makes the water flow. Probably like a uh, flat plate of rock. Really? You can see the rock? Yeah, you can see the rock underneath the water. It's probably two feet under the water there. How surprising do you think it would be if you came around the corner and had raft? I would be shocked my heart would be in my throat. No, that no, would be a little too much. No, no. Like something out of a cartoon if you got to this spot. Yeah, you'd see my arms up like a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> the river today was... Uh, um, it was a real wake-up call. I really felt that I could, I could reach out and, and probably do things again. Um, I was very, very active. Mountaineering, uh, mountain biking, skiing, everything that, uh, everything that you do to maximize your life in British Columbia. And uh, in a way, I kind of let that slip and kind of get away from me. And I think it. Uh, this trip is really, really turning me on to that again. I really hadn't got as far as I thought I had on um, my, my journey to get back and, uh, into a full life after my, uh, my injury. And one of the things that I've really learned this week has been that uh, the barriers that I had kind of put into my, in my way, um, they're really just challenges and problems that need to be solved. Most of the things that I thought I couldn't do, um, I stop and think about the, uh, the solution, work through it. Um, I can do a lot more than I thought I could. This is definitely one of the, the peaks in my life um, that I'll just cherish for forever. It's something I've been wanting to do for the last four years and just kind of put it off as saying, no, it's going to be a hassle. I, I don't really want to go there. He was looking for something that basically kickstart him. Both the brotherhood of the firefighters, the camaraderie, just being outdoors in the in nature, the adrenaline of going on a river and on a raft again. I just think the whole experience was almost overwhelming. I don't think he expected it at all. The camaraderie I really missed. You know, it's been there a whole time and I just never reached out for it. The experience that we've had has just been quite transformative for me. I'd have to say that um, one of the most special parts that we're getting to know Aaron and Jackie. Don't have the opportunity to pass you by. You know, you never know how it's going to turn out, and um, you never know what tomorrow brings. My wife and my two boys, they enjoy the outdoors as well, and in a lot of ways, they rely on me to make those trips happen. I used to make those trips happen. I'm going to make them happen again. We're going to get out there and do it. The Achievables. with us. It's really important here in Squamish. My lovely wife, Anne. Two boys, Rory, he's uh, 14, and 13-year-old Lucas. And my mother, Janet, is here from Ontario visiting. Got home from the Kootenai rafting trip about three and a half weeks ago. Got ourselves this nice canoe here, and we're going to take the family out today, and we're going to give it a try. 
Who's okay, got the most do it? Oh my goodness. Hang on. Oh, where's Nanny? I'm right She's here. in the cedars. <laughs> <laughs> when I first was approached to come on the, uh, the whitewater rafting trip to the Kootenai River, I was really apprehensive because I didn't think that I could do it with the, uh, the disability that I, that I have. Like, how do you paddle? Uh, whitewater raft with with one hand. You don't. Good okay, morning. Okay, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> After a day or two on the river, I realized that uh, it was totally possible, and that I could contribute. And pulling hard on the paddle and feeling that ex exhilaration was really inspiring for me. I think the trip was an epic change for a lot of people in their lives. Um, to be given that next push, show them I can do it. It's been huge. It was empowering seeing people step out of this, outside their boundaries, to experience what maybe they have been denying themselves for whether it's a couple of years or for a long period of time. And it might be for some people something they experienced before, but they haven't allowed themselves to re-engage. Or for others, it's something they may never have thought was possible ever in their life. And now with a disability, and their challenges, they're realizing how much more able they are. I've seen Aaron, both Aaron's grow through this trip. They inspired me uh, definitely just by what they have had to go, go through in their lives and uh, how, this, how this trip changed them as well. I've been um, doing lots and looking for other opportunities and I know that it's never gonna replicate what, you know, putting me on the side of a cliff. No, it's just another experience, and I'm looking for looking forward to the next one. Well, today I'm very happy to be out here with my family. The last time that we canoed together was early summer of uh, 2011. So eight years ago, or five weeks later, I was injured in late August. Aaron went through a lot of changes on this trip, and I think a lot of them are going to help him in his personal life, but I think a lot of them is, are going to also reflect on how he can help others not just how it's going to change his family life. And I think the amount of empowerment he's felt through this trip is, is, is way out there beyond what he ever could have imagined it would have been. I would find myself at home when my wife and my kids would go cross-country skiing. I found an excuse not to go. My wife, Anne, has been a big support for me, and I know it, it must have been challenging. We've had to tackle how best to let Aaron have the time to recover, to the time to discover how to manage his life, his everyday life with one arm. I started to slide downhill and feel like uh, I wasn't capable of uh, some of the activities that I had previously done. And um, eight years is a long time. When uh, he called me on his way back from the trip, I could just hear in his voice, that something had changed. Without him saying anything, you could just hear it, that it went really well. And I was ecstatic to hear that he was ready to embark on many more adventures. It's really special to have my mom here now, to have her see me back out on the water. In the hospital, you said, my career is over. And that was the one thing I thought, no, no, no. You come back into the fire department and uh, all of a sudden you're not a a very capable, able, strong, two-handed young man that is the one that's helping people and saving other people. Um, you have to redefine yourself. When you uh, so first sent me a photograph of you in your blue uniform with your prosthetic, I had, had really not many opportunities to see you in that uniform. And to see you standing there, with your arm, and you were so proud. That's just amazing. <laughs> They're the proud things you should be proud of, because it doesn't matter about your arm, you're still that fireman, you're still that fireman. You may not fight fires, but you're still there, you know? I'm really proud of the recovery and taking taking my time to kind of get, get myself back to a place where I feel confident again. You have to find that again somehow, your will to make the kind of life that you want to happen, happen. Making that extra push and, and 
persevering and pushing forward. Uh, that's how we all grow and just awe inspired. I'm not going to say no to those, no to these things that you know, would have previously stopped me. You can be bitter. You can be better. I'm feeling my my old self return. Uh, it's a new old self. It's not the same guy, but I think I'm back. Produced by Pamela Tomlinson, Director of Photography, Dion Nell, Camera, John Morris, Tyler Messervey, Rob Braun, and Chris Christie, Boat Dolly, Brad Goodwin, Drone Pilot, Tyler Messervey, Location Audio by Jason Wood, Production Manager, Rob Braun, Edited by Pamela Tomlinson, Narration by Graham Reaper. Special thanks to Troy Becker, Aaron Clements, Aaron Gelowitz, Jackie Tom, Matthew Witt, Sharon Goldthorpe, Jason Durham, Jason Horodmanuk, Pat Harmada, Kim Zabati, Lynette Legrandeur, Jennifer Swirls, Lyle Wilson, the West Kelowna Professional Firefighters Local 4457, Angelo and Don Fialco from Tim Hortons, West Kelowna, and Chris Adaptive Travel, Integrated Described Video Specialist, Simone Cupid, Regional Content Specialist, Sylvie Fiquette, Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson, Director Production, Kara Nye, Director Programming, Brian Perdue, VP Programming and Production, John Melville, President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2019 Accessible Media Inc. An AMI Original Production.